Um, Got yours oh, done? Okay. I decided to do the recording so it wouldn't you, be. Have you pushed your buttons? I did. We have a different setup here this morning, y'all. Hello. This is this is my first wife, Connie. And yeah, this is Bill Dubois. Can you are you in there too, Bill? Yeah, I'm in hers. You're in I'm hers, not, okay. I'm not in mine. You're not, well, for those in in Bill's, this is Bill over here, so good we're, morning. We're in Bill's dining room. How about that? So mm -hmm. test yours again, Bill. Good morning. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. You like microphones, don't you, Bill? No. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> Alrighty, Connie, you ready? I am. What are we doing? Well, I think we're in chapter 19 of Revelation. Alrighty. Y'all ready to get started? Now, let me ask you something, folks. No, I'm just kidding. Does the return, you shouldn't have said no, because here's the question. Does the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, kind of perk us up a little bit to yes. like... We might want to study about that. Well, that's what we're going to study today. If you've been uh, in the continuation of our study, uh, folks, if, if you have in your mind today of the little bitty baby in the manger, well, put that on hold for just a minute because this is not the little bitty baby in the manger coming back. This is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords coming back, and he is going to rule and reign with a rod of iron and i don't know what kind of deal right now so y'all just forgive me we're going to continue on yeah, keep going. revelation chapter 19 and after these things again when it starts off like that we know john the revelator means what has just happened and what had just happened in revelation 17 was the uh, dissolving of the religious babylonian empire the uh, world religion system the uh, the one that the Antichrist and his cohorts did not care for at all. They had one mind. God used them to, to dissolve that, and they were all uh, done away with. 18 was the political realm of uh, the Babylonian Empire, and now then we see it is being put down, and the only way it's going to be put down is when the Son of God steps out and says, you know what, it's enough, that's enough. God looks over at his Son and says, that's enough. After these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Now, folks, if that don't get you to cooking right there, I don't know what it is. Now, mark that word Alleluia in verse 1 because we're going to see it again in verse 3. Uh, and again in verse 4, and again in verse 6, and the word Alleluia, it's spelled A-L-L-E-L-U-I-A -L -L -E here, but also we've seen it H-A-L-L-E-L-U, -L -L I think J-A-H at the end. Well, that J-H, if you go back, though, did you cut me completely off? Am I too no, I was just trying to get some of that. If you go back to the psalm, the psalmist writes J-A-H, Yah, his breath, that's what that means. So the actual living being self-existent. This is praise to the self-existent one. Capital O-N-E. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, when creation was going on, this was the spirit hovering over, the spirit that breathed life into that clump of clay, mankind. This is the spirit that the psalmist writes about, the, the breath that was given. And incidentally, when Sarai's name was turned to Sarah, he had to take the he had to take her out and put his breath in. Remember Abram to Abraham and Sarah asked to Sarah? Okay, he had to put his breath in that. Mm -hmm. So here it is. Notice what's going on there. Notice the praises. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Folks, we are going to be able to do this one of these days live, face to face Amen. with our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you realize that? Now, do I need to say it again? You, Bill Dubois, Connie and myself and everyone that's listening today who knows the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, we are going to sing praises and glory and salvation and honor to Jesus the Christ face to face. Amen. Amen. Mm -mm. For true and righteous are his judgments. 
What have the angels been saying all this time? Every time since the seals started breaking, the trumpets were sounding, the bowls were being poured out, the vials were being poured out. Every time one of these happened, what would they say? True and, uh, true and just, mm -hmm. uh, faithful righteous. and true and yes. righteous are what you're doing today, Lord. This is what is happening. Every time something that, uh, that has happened because they see the sin and the uh, degradation and the wickedness and the rebellion that has happened on this world, in this world, since the garden. So every time the Lord Jesus pours out any one of these uh, types of judgment, it is reported right back to him, which it doesn't need to be. It's just for our benefit. True and righteous are your judgments. Amen. Amen. Okay. Sin has to be dealt with. That's you and I have right. been talking about that, Bill, on Wednesdays. Yeah. Sin has to be dealt with. We, we saw that Wednesday in our study. How wonderful these, the parallels of Isaiah. <laughs> Isaiah, we read about the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> in the middle of Isaiah yeah. 19 and then 20 of how the yeah. Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, that one that's going to come out and save those. You right, know, right. We, we read about Egypt and Ethiopia and Israel. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ in the middle of chapter 19 of Isaiah. And here he is. We see him now. Mm -mm -mm. It's wonderful. Somebody pretty wise put all this together. You know that? Yes, sir. Yes. Very wise. Yes, uh, the wise Lord God. Yeah. As a matter of fact, as we've always said, Isaiah was written 660 some mm -hmm. odd years before the BC, birth of Christ right? himself. <laughs> and now we see it happening. Right. Sure enough, got to be a bigger, bigger than you and me. Now then, verse 3, it says, and uh, like again, I've written so much on mine, it says, uh, and again, they said, Alleluia. And uh, her smoke, let's see, what does it say? Can I read 3? And her smoke rose up forever and ever. Okay, because what's going on? For true and righteous are his judgments, verse 2, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. We saw that in the last in 17 and 18 both. Folks, the continual rebellion against this Lord God, you are going to end up, what it just said, a smoke forever and ever. Now that's you're going right. to be fitted for a body that's going to go into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. But you're going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the great white throne judgment and be judged for those things that you have done wickedly in your body continually, continually wickedness. Did, have they had a chance, Bill and Connie? Have they had a chance up to now to get yes. right with the Lord? Ever, ever few verses, he says, have you had enough? And numerous times. Numerous times. Over and over and over again. Is he doing that for you today? In your lives today, does, does he perk your conscience, your inside, your heart, and go, wait, wait a minute. That's not right. Remember, the Lord chastens those that he loves. The Lord spanks his children. If you're being spanked today, get right with God. You get right with God. He's right, so you get right with Him. Yes, the Lord doesn't give you a timeout, though, does He? Uh, sometimes He can put you flat on your back looking up at a hospital ceiling. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm saying timeout, I mean, as you've been a bad boy, the old uh, Dr. Spock philosophy of, you know, I can mm -hmm. remember when I was a kid, you know, I'd get punished, and my dad would whoop my butt, and then it would be done, and then my friend would be grounded for a week, mm -hmm. and he was told me one day, he says, you know, Bill, I'd just rather get my butt whooped there once, and I could be back outside, you know? Sometimes that's the way the Lord does it. Sometimes he works that way in your life. He goes, bam, you know, right then, and sometimes he lets you see and go and go and go and go, yeah. and you may waste years of your life, mm -hmm. but he'll get your attention. He will get your attention, mm -hmm. okay? Has he gotten these people's attention? Not yet. Not yet. Mic a little bit, and we're pinging a little bit. Uh, Slide this way. Technical uh, time out here, y'all. That way, it won't be pinging so much whenever you are uh, talking. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, oh, that's bad. No little ringing. Did yeah, you just say, bring it closer to you, but just don't make it face that way. Did you just say better? Better. Okay, that, you're, now you're talking about Bill. Well, there's an R on the end of that there word. Better, that's better. better. It's well, better. <clears throat> I'll Much put an better. extra R in somewhere else. Yankees. Oh, my goodness. She's not a Yankee. She grew up in Texas, right? Yes. Verse 4 says, And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. And what else? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, do you realize what we are reading over right here is the Hallelujah Chorus? This is the one that we've heard about and sang about in churches and stuff like that growing up. Hopefully you have or have heard about it. 
This is the real one. This is the Alleluia course where there again, the representation there in verse 4, it represents all of it, the host of heaven. That's what that's talking about. Fall down before him and sing praise to the Lord. Amen. He is the one that deserves it. Now remember verse thir uh, chapter 13, the first part talking about the beast from the sea, the Antichrist. The second part talking about the false prophet. And then uh, the, the battle in heaven, Michael wins, kicks uh, Satan out. For a while, that entity desires and gets praise and worship. Mm. Right. But it's false and it's not true and it's against God's will. Now then, here in 19, he's straightening th these things out. We get to see this, by the way. That's right. Okay? Because let's keep reading. Let's see where the church fits in on this. If y'all are interested. Are y'all interested? Yes, yes, we are. I think we're interested. Yeah, we're interested. Keep going. And the, keep going. Yes. And, the, uh, and a voice came out of the throne saying, praise our God. That came out of the throne. So uh, some of them may say the Lord Jesus Christ. It just says a voice. So it may be a special angel that said it. What does your say, Bill, there in five? And from the throne came a voice that said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is... This is a direction, a command from the throne saying, praise God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. Well, what have we seen up to this point here has been a great lack of fear. Mm -hmm. In fact, there has been no fear of this God of heaven. Right. They have been mocking this God of heaven. But folks, turn in your Bibles today. I hope you're in Revelation 19 with us. But turn in your Bible real quick back over to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. And it says something to this effect. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. What a man sows, that shall he also reap. I believe that's something what it says. I didn't have that in my Galatians, notes. Galatians 6 and 7, is that what that says? Check me right quick. Make sure. We're going to make sure. But I believe that's yeah, what it says. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. So we have seen a mocking for a time. And we see that today in our society where people throw their fists up to heaven mm -hmm. and say, uh, when Jesus, if Jesus comes back, kill him again, etc., etc. Like you mentioned, uh, those signs. We've seen it from the 60s and 70s. God is dead or kill God mm -hmm. or whatever to heaven or blow smoke up to heaven or whatever else. And we've seen people who blaspheme the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and they die. Okay? Mm -hmm. God will not tolerate being mocked. Mm -hmm. That's right. He will not. He is God. He is God, and he will not tolerate his holy name being mocked. Well, if he tolerates it, it's just going to escalate. Well, he has for a little while. He's had, he has for these six but and a half, seven years. But for those individuals, if they're willing to do that at that time, <clears> then, and he knows their hearts, they're going to get worse and worse and lead others down that path. Well, sometimes he gives them a month or a year or whatever right. else or a lifetime, but they're going to die in misery. Exactly. Sometimes they die the next day. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a list of people that have died that have mocked God's name or mocked the crucifixion or said something bad about Jesus or been on stage in a concert and got a cigarette and blew up to, into the ceiling and said, there, that, that smoke is for you, God, and this, that, and other. They die. Mm -hmm. Okay? They just die. Or they say they're more popular than Jesus and right. that he was too simple and his servants were too simple. And, and, and uh, on and on and on about that, they die. So verse 5 right there, keep in mind, people today, those that fear him are the ones in this audience. Amen. Those that fear him, those that have a reverence, that's what that word fear means, is we have an awesome reverence for this God, our creator God. Okay, that's what that means. Verse 6 says, And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunders saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Amen. Folks, we can say that today in our lives today, Connie and Bill and myself and you people that are watching today and listening to this message from the Holy Word of God, we can say that today in our lives, our God reigns. He will not give up his throne. No one can kick him off of his throne. He is the Lord God. He is omnipotent. That's what that word means. All powerful, almighty, all knowing and eternal. And he is and was and shall be. We will see this one day when the Lord Jesus Christ, when God the Father looks over at his holy dear son, the one that you people are mocking today. 
and that you don't believe what he did on the cross and you disannul what he has done for you and you curse the name of Jesus Christ and you blaspheme the name of God of heaven and you do all of these rebellious things in your mind and your heart and your wicked ways, one day soon, folks, the Lord God of heaven is going to look over to his right to his dear son that gave his life on the cross and he's going to say, that's enough, go get them. Amen. And this is the crowd that is talking about. You better be right with him today, folks, because one day, that day, is coming. It is coming. Right. Coming soon, you know what we think. It's coming Amen. soon. It's coming soon to a rebellious nation near you. Okay? Right. <laughs> That's a good way of putting right. it. Be a part of his chosen crowd. There again, verse 1, hallelujah. Verse 3, hallelujah. Verse 4, hallelujah. Verse 6, hallelujah. Praise him. Praise the Lord God. He deserves our praise today. He is worthy. When the Lamb of God stood up in chapter 5 of Revelation, because no one in earth, under earth, above earth, or beside earth was found worthy to, to even look at the scroll, this one was. This is the one that's coming back. He is coming back. Amen. Hold on. Hold on, brother. He's coming back. Oh, that's a good title for a song, Hold On, Brother. Hmm. <laughs> he's a coming back. You gotta do a little right. Texas stuff. He's a he's, coming he's back. He's a coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for that promotion there. Hopefully y'all enjoy that song. Number one on my last CD. Hold on, brother. Let us. Uh, verse seven says, "Let us be glad and rejoice." Now here we go, y'all. Get get your notes ready for seven, eight, and nine. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Folks, our wedding day is coming. Amen. Bill, I think you have a few there. Todd, you have a few there. Right. Read the first couple of ones that you have there that pertain to what is going on here. Now, here are some of the events. If you want to write these down, folks, I've listed on my notes, and I think I've given them their notes, some of the events that are going to happen. Let me read them right quick, and then they're going to read their notes out of the Bible. They're going to not have to turn to them because of uh, I wrote them and then Connie printed them out on this little gizmo yesterday and they're all nice and neat. Yeah. And it's not uh, not Sammy's chicken scratches, Connie, as uh, Bill uses says it. Anyway, these are the Bye events. <laughs> these are the events, folks. Write these down in your mind and your Bible somewhere on a piece of paper right quick. The rapture is going to happen. Okay? The rapture will happen. The church will be in heaven. That's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. Does anybody have that one? Okay, go ahead and beat it real. Beat it real. Read it, Bill. Okay, beat it real. <laughs> beat it real. Okay, let me move this microphone yes. over here. Gets a little bit. You, this is good you, stuff, y'all. Listen yes. to this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump <laughs> of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together and then in the clouds to meet the Lord. Amen. Amen. In the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. First sleep. First is lonely. First is lonely. And for 16 and 17. You want me to continue on? No, hold it right there. That's the rapture, folks. That's what happens first, the rapture. Okay? We're going to be raptured. Amen? Amen. We're going to be raptured. Woo. Can you feel it? Can you feel it in your heart now? Alrighty. Second, now then, look here. It just talked about in Revelation 19. Let me go over this again. Revelation 9, uh, 19, 7, 8, and 9. It talks about some fine linens there. What are we arrayed in? And verse 8 says, And to her was granted the church. The, we're now the bride of Christ. We're in heaven. Going from the church on earth to the bride of Christ in heaven. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. We are now arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. What makes up our apparel? We are going to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the Bema seat one of these days. 
That is in, everybody have it? 2 Corinthians, you got that? Yeah. Read 2 Corinthians 5.10, Connie. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. That's our apparel, folks. We're working on that today. What you and I do today in our lives, our daily living before the Lord Jesus Christ, after our conversion, we have a newness in our spirit. That newness in our spirit and the renewing of our mind, renewing is a continual process, by the way. That's what the Bible says, renewing of the mind. We die to ourselves daily. We bear the cross that he gives us. We take up our cross and follow him. Therefore, we are putting on this apparel that we are going to be judged in, not for our salvation, folks, not if we're saved or not. If you're at the Bema seat, you're there. You're his. You're okay. But how okay are you? There's going to be a uh, kind of a looking around and seeing what have my children done? What have you been doing with your lives? That's what the Bible says. Now, who has 1 Corinthians 3? Anybody have that one? I have it over here. Okay, 1 Corinthians 3. Read some of that right there, what, what it says about. Oh, now, then you've heard the uh, gold, silver, and precious stones, and then you have wood, hay, and stubble. Is that in there somewhere? Uh, I'm in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 11 through 13. Okay. For Sounds other right. foundations can no man lay that is than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, who do you think is the judge that is looking down at us and seeing that? Oh, my goodness, Kitty is about to make her move. Okay. <laughs> we have a guest. We have a guest. All, let all creation praise the Lord, right? Is that what the Bible says? Now, then, getting back to what you just read, Bill, what did we read about? No microphone for this cat. What did we, what did we read about the Lord Jesus Christ? What was some of his, uh, what he looked like in chapter 1? The flame of fire, right. the brass, all this. Now we've seen him again also. This is what's going on. Is she blocking me? I don't think so. She's, She's making me dizzy with her tail there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so pretty. That's peaches, right? Yep. Okay, that's peaches. You're going to beat the supper. Somebody's going to yes. beat the supper, I think. Oh. Peaches. Now then, we also have, and you've heard about these before. I've got the list of my notes. I don't, know if I don't think I'll put them in yours. But we're talking about crowns, crowns and rewards. Uh, Connie, turn to Matthew 6 20. Do you have that on yours? I got something here about crowns, treasures, in heaven. Okay. Read that right quick as Connie turns to Matthew 6, 20. Go ahead and just read right. the Bible. It says, But lay up for yourselves Never treasures mind. in heaven. Okay. That's it. Where neither moth nor rust cloth, crust, rust doth yeah. corrupt, yeah. and where thieves do not break through nor steal. That's King Matthew James. 6, 20, King James Version. King James Version, right. Do if, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Corrupt and do if, yes. In other words, who was saying that? The Lord Jesus Christ right. was yeah. telling us, his disciples, his followers. He says, hey, I know about this day coming. I don't know when it's going to be. But one of these days when I ascend, do all that I'm supposed to do here on this earth, die on the cross, go to the tomb, be resurrected, ascend. I'm going to be sitting at the right hand of my Father in heaven. And one of these days, y'all, church, people, followers, this is what's going to happen. So I'm telling you right now. Be preparing yourselves for that day. What are we reading about here in 19, 7, 8, and 9? What we are robed in, what our fine linen is made up of, what we're doing today. Does it matter what I do in my life today? <coughs> yes, yes, it does. Yes. There are five different crowns listed. I don't know if I listed it on y'all's. Let me run over right quick. The crown of glory, 1 Peter 5, 4, or for faithful servants. The crown of rejoice, for soul winning, pointing souls to Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 2.19 The crown of righteousness For those that love his return Anybody y'all looking for, for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen, Amen. You pray daily, even so come Lord keep, Jesus keep Get us out of this class. mess yes. He is the one that's going to get us out of this mess And he's coming back The crown of righteousness First, uh, 2 Timothy 4.8 The incorruptible crown A pure life How many of us need to live a pure life? Well, we trust the Lord Jesus Christ We need to live a pure life before him We're not perfect in our flesh But we can live a, attain a pure life right. uh, 1 Corinthians 9.25 And also a crown of life The crown of life You're going to die for that one We're seeing that here These martyrs They're going to get a crown of life 
uh, Revelation, uh, in Revelation 3 and 10 that talks about the crown of life. Those are some of the crowns that we have. But Jesus himself said, be storing up treasures where? In heaven. Amen. Not here on this earth. Forget about the materialism. Do you need stuff? Yeah, we need stuff. Do you need money? Yeah, you need some money to live. But don't make that your goal. We just read about that in Isaiah last week and the week before. Don't make that your God, your little God on this earth. Put God first in your life, folks. He is coming back. So here's the righteousness that we are robed in. Just wanted to give you a little Sammy sideline of all that. Okay? Revelation 19, 7, 8, 9. That's what it's talking about. Verse 10 says, And I fell at his feet, this is John, uh, to worship him, and he saith unto me, this is a good angel, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of who? Jesus. Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. First Peter 1, 2. What is that? The trueness of this doctrine of this Bible, this is the word of God. It is true. It is complete for what we need to know. It is inerrant. There are no mistakes in it. It does not contradict itself. Jesus came in the flesh. He was sent from his father above. He did the perfect will of his father. He came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to the house of David first. They rejected him. He died on the cross to save sinners that were not a people, that were not a name, other sheep, as Isaiah calls him. That's you and me and everybody else that's listening today that's not Jewish, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He went to the cross. He suffered. He died. He went to the tomb. He was in there for three days. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He holds the keys, as we read a few chapters back, to death, hell, and the grave, and eternity. He arose from the dead. He ascended to his father, and he is waiting now for his father to say, go get your children. That's what that verse just said. Amen. Amen on that one. That's the prophecy of this Bible. Do not distort Jesus Christ. Do not blaspheme his name. Do not say Jesus and. It's Jesus only. He is the one that has done all this. Amen. He has fulfilled every prophecy. He is the one that is perfect and true and just. And he's keeping an eye on you today and on me today. He sees our every move. He knows the intent of our heart. Right. And when we stand before him as his children, this is his children, the bride, the bride of Christ now in heaven, He's going to go, Bill, man, I gave you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to do my will. And guess what? You did it. Look at this. Here's your crown of this. Here's your crown of that. Here's your, look at your mansion that you've got. Or he's going to say, Bill, I gave you opportunity after opportunity. I have all this stored up here for you that I, I thought you might do that. And we're not going to fool God, you understand? Right. This is for human standpoint. You stand before him and he goes, Beep, there, I'm keeping your crown, but here's your little jewel. Now go get your cabinets in the back of the heaven. Which one do you want? Which one are we attaining? Which one are we striving for? Does it not make us and our spirits feel better when we do good stuff, good works? We're saved. How are we saved? Unto good works. Not for good works, not by good works, but unto good works, right? That's right. right. We do that. We do the good works after salvation because of the right motive in our heart now. Right, right. You don't, you, you don't really... Saved by faith, saved by right. grace. A way I look at it is when you do something good, you're not really thinking about the Lord at that time. You're just thinking about how can I help this person because you want to help them. It's, it's the Holy Spirit driving you to do that. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I look at it this way. I say, you know, everybody talks about righteousness and getting crowns of, of this, but... I don't think of it that way. Right. Well, that shouldn't be our forethought. The forethought should be serving the Lord. Right. Just like this angel just said, when John, now this is an awesome sight you have to understand. This is an awesome sight for a human man to see, an older man on the Isle of Patmos, because he saw Jesus and was with Jesus about 30 or 40 years earlier. Remember that? Right. John, the one whom he loved. Remember that? Yes. This is John. Amen. So when he sees this and hears this and knows what's going on, he falls before this and he's already fallen before the Lord Jesus Christ, which was right. Mm -hmm. Remember in, in chapter one. Now that he sees this and the angel, this is a good angel. He says, don't, don't do that. See that you do that not. I'm just here to tell you about the one that's coming. Well, let's get to it. Y'all ready to get to it? Amen. Here we go. 19... And 11, 1911. Folks, this is a 911 for you sinners. This is a 911 for the sinners of 1911. 
Um, Connie, read, read uh, this is so lovely. I, I just want to sit here and listen to it read. Revelation 19, 11. Y'all listen to this. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. My goodness. Now guess who that is? That is the Son of the living God. That is our Lord Jesus Christ. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. Folks, this is the true one. This is not the one that we read about, the four horsemen. This is the real one. This is not the Antichrist coming. That's the false peace that just lasts for a little while that, that deceives the world. This is the one that's going to take care of the deception in the world. This is the real one. This is Jesus the Christ. Amen. It says, I saw heaven open, and he that sat upon uh, him the, on this uh, horse was called faithful and true, and in righteousness doth he what? Judge and make war. Not a cuddly little old baby, a little baby, or an old grandpa that you have on remote control, folks. This is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is coming back to judge and to make war. What is he going to make war with? Who is he going to make war with? Satan and all of his minions, the false prophet and the antichrist, and the millions of people that are following this false way of living. That's who he judges and makes war with. And folks, let me assure you, Jesus wins, as usual. Amen. Now, now, now let's think about the Gospels here. Let's think about Mark and Matthew and Luke and John and see if we let's can tie this. It. Let's see if we can tie these in together, okay? You ready? Mm -hmm. Have you ever tied these in together? The Gospels here in these next few verses? Let's just see. I bet you have. You've studied the Bible before. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head, uh, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knoweth but he himself. And he was uh, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Somebody's going to have to turn back to Isaiah uh, and read somewhere in Isaiah here in just a minute. Isaiah 63. Uh, that's the last page of the New Testament. Yeah, Isaiah 63. Uh, dipped in blood, and on his name is called the Word of God. Now, then, while y'all are turning to that, let me say something here. Verse 11 and 12 and 13 of Revelation 19. Think about these Gospels here. Think about Mark and Matthew and Luke and John. And I'm saying that chronologically, see? Are you thinking? Okay. Faithful and true. That's Mark's Gospel. He fulfilled that. He was the faithful and true servant. When God the Father sent Jesus, he came as a servant, humble and meek. He's faithful and true. He did his Father's will. That's Matthew's God. That's a Mark's gospel, all of it, okay? And it says, uh, judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Many crowns? Matthew's gospel. Matthew, the first chapter, tells about he is the king, his kingly royal lineage, who he is. He is the king. That's right. Okay? The next one says, and uh, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knoweth but he himself. Luke, he was called the Son of Man. Amen. I don't know fully what that means. Nobody knows fully what that means. The Bible says it this way. God only knows the Son perfectly and purely, and the Son only knows the Father perfectly and purely. That's his name, the Son of Man. He is the Son of God pure and holy and begotten Son of God. He also is called the Son of Man throughout Luke's. He's peppered throughout there. The Son of Man, he knows that. And will he reveal it? I'm not sure. That's Luke's gospel. And it says also, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Get ready. Get ready in, in Isaiah. And his name is called what? The Word of God. The Word of God. John's gospel, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. There you have all the Gospels in those three verses right there, full and complete. Did y'all know that? I bet you're scratching your heads going, man, that bald-headed guy over there in Greenville sure is good. Well, they didn't say amen, so let's just move on. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for revealing that to us, how your Gospels fit perfectly into the Revelation. Now, read Isaiah. Now, what she's going to say is, this is part of here where he's come to uh, judge and make war. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Now, wait a minute. This is Jesus coming back from heaven. Why? Why? And you're on. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah, 
this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength, I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Therefore, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is, mine, is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. Did you notice the, the, the words peppered out through there? I didn't hear soft and gooey and cuddly and loving. And folks, the, the reason, if you look at me sometimes and you say, man, Sam, he just teaches harsh stuff. He teaches mean stuff. Well, I try to balance out what so many other teachers teach, which is love and grace and mercy and patience and on and on. Am I grateful for all that? Absolutely. Wouldn't be sitting here without that, Bill. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have hope without that. Mm -hmm. But so many of teachers forget that God, Hebrews, it's in Hebrews, speckled throughout all of the great and wonderful teachings in the book of Hebrews about Christ Jesus, our high priest, right in the middle of it. God is a consuming fire. The day of reckoning will come. Amen. That's why we allow his vengeance. Notice what it says there. What is in his heart? What vengeance. is in his heart? The day of vengeance. Vengeance. Is in my heart. Jesus Christ, right now, is he mediator? Yes. Is he kind and loving and patient? Yes. But folks, he sees a world of wickedness going on right now that has rejected what he did on the cross. He gave his life. He gave his life's blood. He took a beating like nobody else. Because he was pure and he was just and he was true, folks. And he is sitting at the right hand of his father right now. And vengeance is in his heart. Every time somebody blasphemes the name of God. Every time a church pastor stands up and teaches something that waters down the gospel. Every time people take dope or use profanity or smoke uh, uh, to kill themselves or... Uh, uh, drive drunk and murder people and abortionists and on and on and on. You list all this stuff. Jesus is taking note of that. And vengeance is in his heart. That's what the word of God says. Now it mentions something about that salvation. Well, a few chapters back, this is Isaiah 63. We only got two or three chapters left in Isaiah. Mm -hmm. After this, it talks about the millennial reign. But before that, where it says no one was with him, no one had to be with him because he himself is salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. He does not call upon anybody else for help or salvation. He alone is salvation. He's not just providing salvation. He is the entity of salvation. Right. And the rest of that sentence is, in the year my redeemed is come. So the, the Christians who suffer being persecuted and even martyred, this is for you. They, they've kept asking up until uh, chapter 17, 18, 19, how long, O Lord? That's right. This is where their answer comes He's from. He's heard their cries. He's heard their cries. He's cry. seen uh, what they've gone through, and he's, he's full of it. Yep. He's tired of it. Just and remember. He, and he takes care of it. Just remember. His there's vengeance. The book, his vengeance. Uh, there again, that's why I sit, and I hate to think of it idly by while so much stuff goes on. I'm still praying about that, y'all. I know to do good and good, and if I don't do it, it's to me it's a sin. But as far as just vengeance upon these people that I would love to take, a, me and Bill could take out a lot of these right. well, bastards. You John know that? the Baptist sure was, a, was a voice crying in the wilderness, mm -hmm. but he did not. Well, what happened to him? He didn't. Well, <laughs> he his he, head cut off. that's right, but he, he knew what was going on, and he didn't go around knocking people down and cutting he their just heads spoke, off. He just told them to repeat. He could that. have, mm -hmm. but he didn't because that was God's business. That's not God's his. business. I, you, uh, the best thing that we can do, folks, is to let God have them, just to look right at their evil eyes and say, I'm going to turn you over to God. Oh. Hmm? That's... Bam. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that's that's 11, 12. Are you expecting uh, Titus 2, 13, the glorious appearing, our eternal hope? Yeah. Are you expecting that? Here it is, folks. It 
will happen. Shall we read on? Verse 14. Not soon enough. Not soon enough, yeah. <laughs> Even so come Lord Jesus. Amen. There you go. Bill's ready. There's still some that need to be ushered in. Yep. Amen. Well, we are we're seeing the fullness of the Gentiles mm -hmm. rapidly, folks. Romans chapter eleven. Study it again. Start about 19, 20, 21 and on. We've been grafted in, but not all have been grafted in yet. That's right. One day, folks, one day, this is the way I like to look at Romans chapter 11. One day, soon, the last Gentile is going to bow their head and heart. Boy, girl, man, I don't care who it is, what it is, where are they? I don't know. But one day soon, that last one is going to say yes to the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's going to be it. That's going to be the fullness of the Gentiles. That's why the Christians today, the, the believers today, we should be vehemently busy proclaiming this word because we may witness to the last one. Amen. If you are living in sin right now, he's and you're watching this, there's a reason for that because he is calling you. You in particular need to get your heart right. You may be the last he one. He will do it for you if mm -hmm. you just ask him to, to help you get right. I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Absolutely. Hey, go back to go back to 10 when John fell before this angel telling the story. Fall before the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Do exactly what John the Revelator did and fall on your knees and your heart before the Lord Jesus Christ and ask him to save your soul and to forgive you of your sins. The word sin, S-I-N, it's not very popular though today. Though they be many, he will forgive them. Absolutely. Though they were scarlet, he shall do what? Wash them white as snow. Amen. That's what his blood did on Mount Calvary, folks. I get, okay, we better move on. Verse 14. Oh, hey, hey, did y'all know that we are in an army? Yes. Did you know that? For, read 14, Bill. Read it out loud. You military man, read it. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. The armies of heaven, dressed in the finest of pure white linen, followed him on white horses. That's 14. 15 goes on and says, From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nation. Mm. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God, mm. the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. Oh, on this robe at his thigh was written the title, King of Kings. Lord of Lords. Mm, mm, mm. Folks, he is coming back. He is coming back. I don't know if y'all said, uh, it's hard for me to sit in this seat right now, but I know if I jump up right now, I'll be out of everything, I'll look out of whack, and I'll the economy have to put, but I sure do want to jump up right now and just say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, notice what you just read. You said the armies, folks. We are going to be with it. Now, who, we just read in Isaiah, it's prophesied, folks. He is going to have spattered on his vesture, on his garments, the blood of those that he is getting rid of. Mm. What's a better word for getting rid of? Annihilating? Eliminate. Eliminating? Killing? Huh? Yeah. Executing? Executing for their crimes. They have been found guilty. On and on and on. The rebellion, they have been found guilty and they are not expecting or wanting. This is when he comes back as a thief of the night. Not to us. Not for a rapture. We know it's about to happen. We know it's going to happen. Amen. This is going to happen as surely as our rapture. This is going to happen. We're going to be with him. And the armies which were in heaven, they also look clothed in fine linen. We're not in camo. No. We're not in fatigues. No. We're in white linen. We're in our robes. Purity and righteousness that we have been building up day by day on this land right now to stand before him. We're preparing. Is there... Uh, uh, what the cathedrals used to say back in the 80s, that song, uh, uh, the wedding ceremony in the air. Remember that? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a wedding ceremony. Yeah, that's, that's coming. Okay. Oh, I love that. In, in the middle 15 about uh, he shall smite the nation. Smite. What does smite mean? Strike down. Strike down. To strike them down. He has a rod of iron. What are the nations that he's talking about? All nations at this time have come against him. They are all allied now with the Antichrist. Remember we mentioned a few Sundays ago, last Sunday, whatever it was, about the campaigns of the Battle of Armageddon. The war, well, the war of Armageddon has several campaigns. Now then, we've seen, um, and, and just to make note, just to get you on a timeline, when Antichrist sets up, okay, the false church is going on in the first part of, of in 17? Yes, sir. The first part of the tribulation. 
then the Antichrist and the false prophets say, well, we don't want them. We want we just uh, the false prophets pointing to the Antichrist saying, we just want him. So they do away with the false religion, the false right. church, right. which he is the biggest grand poop of all false religions. He's Satan incarnate. Anyway, here's the timeline of that. That's midpoint. That's when, if you read in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter uh, 7, throughout 7 and on to the end, he makes a treaty with Israel, right? You've heard about that before? Yeah. A, a false treaty. They sign it. They think, oh, peace, peace. But there's not peace. There's sudden destruction. What is that sudden destruction? The no land of the north comes and attacks them. They said, what better time to attack little Israel down there and get their oil and foods and wines and, and everything else, uh, both oils, oil, vin um, olive and petroleum, okay, uh, and, and that surrounding area. That's Russia. Ezekiel 38 and 39, Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the first part of that. And then the kings of the south come up, the Arab nations. All these people are going to just fall in line right quick. But when they do, and after the Euphrates River dries up, the kings of the east march over with a 200 million man army. The Antichrist hears all this in that Mesopotamian area. He goes, whoa, whoa, hold on a minute. Instead of us all fighting together uh, with each other, let's all fight together and go against the God of heaven. Let's battle the one that they call Jesus that says he's coming back. They dare to, to, to battle, raise their battle flags all united now together to battle against Jesus Christ. That's right. Can you imagine a world of armies and all kind of powers? And the pride involved in that. And all the pride. And this is what, can, absolutely. <laughs> this, is, this is the culmination of where, where we're at now. It was real quick, mm -hmm. but that's how we get to this point where it says the armies uh, which were in uh, heaven followed him on the white horses. And verse 15 says, And out of his mouth goeth a um, sharp a sword. A that, sword. What, what would that be? What would, his, what would the sharp sword be, y'all? The you word, know? word of God. His word. His word, folks. We don't, we're not coming back with Uzis. <laughs> I kind of like to leave with one. But we're not coming back with one. Won't need them. Won't need them. That should smite the nations, with, and and uh, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and tread the wine presses, and fierce with the wrath of his almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How can we read it on his thigh? People have asked that question to me several times before, or made comment about it. Well, when you're sitting on a horse, when you're standing and sitting on a horse, is two different viewpoints of a person, <coughs> right? Amen. You're standing, if you have a long vesture on, you can't read it, but you get up on a horse, it falls over to the side. Mm -hmm. King of kings and Lord of lords, he's visible coming back in battle. That's right. And when he comes back in battle, every eye shall see him. A whole lot of eyes are seeing him. There's three people in this room right now, plus the Holy Spirit of God, thank you. But more eyes are seeing us right now through these little things. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay? And yeah. hearing us is tell, a, tell us something or other. Television? Would that be... Well, it's telling the truth. Telling the, tr telling the truth. Telling the truth. There you go. I like yeah. that. Cool. Pods. Pads and pods, yeah. Notice that, though, in the end of 15, the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. Man, you want to get somebody stirred up, this is the one that you better not be on that side of. You better be on his kind, loving, gentle, patient, yeah, merciful no. side. My goodness. King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel, in verse 17, standing in the sun. And he cried, must be a big angel, right? This powerful angel. Stand in the sun, S-U-N. Can you imagine that? And he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst. Now, folks, if you have a queasy stomach right now, you might want to turn your television down real low or whatever you're listening on because this is kind of interesting, interesting scripture here. The angel standing in the sun here. I don't know why I'm doing that. Why, why do I do that with my hand? The angel standing in the wants, yeah. the angel standing in the sun would that get your attention? Notice I asked that question throughout that's that's kind of peppered throughout the scripture when something like this happens it's an attention getter. That's right. Okay, uh, I, I won't use the word eclipse because the Bible doesn't say it. But what are you on? I was saying get your attention. Oh, get your attention. Yes, but notice he's going to get the world's attention. Now notice. We are all anticipating, you and I this morning, believers are anticipating the, the, the great supper uh, of the Lamb, our, our, our wedding feast supper, okay? Right. But there's one that occurs along about this time here in the Bible. Uh, Connie, you read it. 
Oh, you're a mean man. Seventeen. You and I've got it. A, I've got such a, a vivid imagination. Do you want me to read eighteen that? through what? Seven. Uh, seven. Read seventeen. Then seventeen. 17. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, just the end. Well, just start at seventeen. Let me just start at seventeen. Yeah. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Well, that's not so bad. I keep going. Okay. Now, these are the carrion. These are, the, and imagine here in Texas, we got buzzards. Right. Over in Africa, they got vultures. But then crows eat meat also. These are all the carrion. Carrion, meat-eating, flesh-eating. Not really pretty yeah, they, birds. Uh, winged. Winged. We're not, winged. Yeah, yeah, we're not talking about cardinals. And yeah, I don't, finches, I don't think there's any rings. finch or, or hummingbirds. Hummingbirds, right. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. It, it all isn't here. Well. Go. <laughs> it's like this at home, too, by the way. <laughs> that ye <you> may... <laughs> That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Now, what better way to clean up the earth than, than to this? And uh, imagine that. Now, sometimes at our house, and I'll get a little greedy here, we, we've got a couple of really good dogs at our house. And one's a shepherd's, one's a pit bull. And if a rodent gets into our yard, they don't have a chance. I mean, they don't, they don't have a chance. And so I'll take the old carcass of the possum or armadillo or whatever it was, and I'll go down the, we live out in the country, and so I'll throw it out in the pasture somewhere, down the road or whatever. And I mean, in less than an hour, there's several buzzards flying around going, I see a me and meal down there. Amen. Okay? And they love it. They love a good, tasty skunk muscle. I mean, fresh skunk muscle is hard to beat for a bunch of bu buzzards. Okay. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they love yeah. it. Anyway, Our dog folks, still has a little whiff of Im <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Imagine, though, what you just read. We're talking about people and uh, horses which were used for, for battle, for war. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the people that have rebelled against the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to die. He's going to kill them with the word of his mouth. They're going to fall over. The world sees this. And the buzzards and vultures and every other meat-eating, flesh-eating fowl is called in. They're already ready, and they devour this. Now, this is going to take a while, too. We're talking about billions of people. Now, do you want to be one of them, Bill? No, I don't want to be one. No. We, where should we be? Behind the Lord Jesus Christ coming in the clouds when he comes back. And by the way, let me reiterate. The Bible said a few verses, a, few, a couple of chapters back, it says that we rejoice. We rejoice over this. That got you stirred up, didn't it? Bill? Yes, it did. <laughs> no. oh, okay, let's move on here. 19 says, uh, Bill, read 19, 20, and 21. Finish this out here. Read it out. Verse 19. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the world and their armies gathered together to fight against the one sitting on the horse and his army. Mm -hmm. to, uh, defy it to the end. Mm -hmm. And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceived all, who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worshipped the statue. Both the beast and his false prophet were thrown alive into the fiery lake of the burning sulfur. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Their entire army was killed by the sharp sword that came from the mouth of the one riding the white horse, and the vultures all gorged themselves on the dead bodies. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, can I real quick turn to Zechariah 12? Uh, back over just right before you get to Matthew, Matthew and then Mal uh, Malachi and Zechariah. Well, basically what you're saying is the word of God is what destroyed them. The word of God. This, folks, is the truth. You cannot do away with it. He says multiple times in his word in different passages, different words. His word is here forever. Heaven and earth can pass away, might pass away, could pass away, will pass away, but his word abides forever. His word lives forever. It is the written word about the living word. Uh, you in Zechariah 2, uh, 12, 2, three, uh, read 12, 2, uh, two and see what that says. 12, 2 of Zechariah. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. 
Let me go on. Yeah, keep on going. Why I'm saying this is this the background. This, this, folks, is the focal point of the last part of the battle of Armageddon. This is where it culminates in is Jerusalem, the, the valley of Jezreel, the Jehoshaphat, yeah. Yeah. Megiddo. Yeah. This is Armageddon ending. This is the ending of Armageddon. So read what Zechariah prophesies to him. In verse 3 it says, And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. And in verse 4 it says, In that day, saith the Lord, I will smite every horse with astonishment, and his rider with madness. And I will open mine eyes upon the house of Judah, and I will smite every horse of the people with blindness. Verse 5, And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, The inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength, and the Lord of hosts their God. Can we go on? Well, this is prefacing Israel's supernatural power mm -hmm. to fight and to maintain just a little bit of a remnant of, of who they are because the right. gist of the ending of Armageddon is to annihilate Israel off of the map. Off right. This is where we are. So go ahead and read tonight. Yeah. I think it's okay. not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Okay, verse... Jesus comes back to stop it. Amen. Okay. This, 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 these two are going together. That's why I, I keep reiterating the ending of Revelation 19, what we see happen is being prophesied what Connie's reading right now to Zechariah. Okay. Zechariah's telling Israel this. All right, I'll just read 6 through 9. Yeah. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheath. And they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Judah is very important. Well, that's where Jerusalem is. Right. And the line of David and, mm -hmm. and Jesus Verse 8, In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and of the house of David shall be as uh, God, as the angel of the Lord before them. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Can you, can you believe, you know, when you think, when you think about it, what we're talking about here, <clears throat> is you have every nation of the world trying to attack a nation that's 200 miles high and 180 miles wide. I mean, and they still can't defeat it. Mm -hmm. Got to be something to that. Right? Yeah. I mean, there has to be something to it. Also, uh, if I flip back to uh, Psalm 87. Psalm 87 talks about later on the millennial when all peoples, it lists different, several different tongues and nations that come up there. Hey, what are you doing here in Jerusalem? I'm here to worship your God. This is what's going to happen in the millennial. Okay, so see how all that goes together. This is happening at the ending. This is, this ends the Battle of Armageddon, which is the end of the tribulation period. I want you to note too, out of as popular and powerful and and um, majestic he is going to be and seem, yeah. and the Antichrist and the false prophet, they have their little reign. Yes, they do. They certainly do. But I want you to note how the ending of it is so much more memorable to me than what they are going to do. The ending of it for eternity, here is the way I remember it. They're the first into the lake of fire. Yeah. They're the first two into the lake of fire. That's right. The false prophet, it says it right there. And the, the beast was taken. That's taken by force. That's, that's taken right. by power. And with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, miracles to deceive the world, to deceive the nations. They have believed, they have had a delusion put over them in their eyes and their heart, and they have believed the lie. They were taken, which uh, he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. You're marked, you're done. You're marked, you're done. That's all there is to it. And them that worshipped his image, these both, look at the end of, and folks, turn in Revelation 19, the last part of verse 20. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone or sulfur, whatever you want to put it. In other words, 
Yay, Jesus. That's right. That, that's how I remember what happened. That, that's the thing that stands out to me. Uh, not the miracles, not the power, not the power wielding, not the image, not the deceiving, blasphemous stuff that they do, but they are the first two into the lake of fire. That's right. Living, they were taken alive and cast into the lake of fire. That's right. That's what happens. Okay? And God is the only one righteous enough to do something like this. Mm -hmm. And there are some who are disillusioned and they think that it's okay to do this to someone else. Cast it burning them alive. Mm -hmm. No one is righteous enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And you will be held accountable for what you've done. To uh, humans and animals. That's right. So I wrote in my margin, I said, the Messiah speaks his word of judgment and poof. That's right. Poof. That's right. Okay. So the, and all the rest of them that were filled. Now imagine that. Imagine, boy, I tell you what, there's going to be some little skinny vultures and and buzzards hovering around and then this happens you know they won't be able to land and partake but they'll see this because they're flying around now imagine this is where i'm going in my head <laughs> nobody's going to go away hungry from nobody's none of these birds are they're going to go away patting their stomachs going oh boy that captain was good he was meaty and well, the captain, I had a, I had 47 of his uh, servants over there. Uh, now, these are the birds talking back and forth. Pick this the is right Sammy. side, yeah, they Pick the right side. <laughs> Speaking Can of you... pick, that's what they're doing. Okay. They're picking them down to the bones. Okay. Can you imagine the amount of dung that's left over? <laughs> hey, well, you got stuff that's going to take care yeah. of that, too, yeah. There you go. This is fertilizing for the uh, for the millennial rain. How things are going to grow. Read Isaiah 65 and 66. How pretty it's going to be. To in, yep. in the next study, the millennial well, rain. Well, the millennial rain, chapter 20, yes, that's going to be Amen. good. Rain. Anyway, that is, there's a lot more to it, but I, I wanted to delve in a little bit. I don't know how long we went uh, in that, but my goodness. I, I wrote the end of my notes here. I want to read these. I wrote this out yesterday, and I, I think this is kind of interesting. Listen to this. Uh, at the end of 19, and 20, uh, 19 to 20 and 21 there in Revelation 19. It says, The Antichrist and the false prophet are really Jesus rejectors right up to the end, daring to make war with the Son of the Almighty. So here is something we can remember of these two. First, to be cast alive into the lake of fire. This concludes all the tribulation and Armageddon battle. And, as usual, Jesus wins. Then I wrote this. He won at the stable. He won at the cross. He won at the tomb. He wins at, he won at his ascension. He won at, uh, at the uh, rise of the Antichrist. He wins at the return. He wins at the millennial reign. And he wins through all eternity. Amen. That's Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus Christ has done, is doing, and will do. Amen. That's our Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith and trust in him today. If he has called you out, just like Jesus, uh, just like Connie said about Jesus a while ago, if you're watching this and you're not really sure you're teeter tottering or kind of seesawing, I don't know if I trust that or not. You better trust it, folks. This is going to happen. From the pages that we've read back to the left, everything has come true. From the ending of from the uh, from the book of Jude, because we haven't got to Revelation as far as it literally being here just yet, not all of it. But from Genesis to Jude, everything has happened That's right. that is prophesied that will happen. Now, there are prophecies that are happening now and that will happen too, peppered throughout Isaiah and Ezekiel and Jeremiah. Yes, I understand that. And, and even in the Psalm, it talks about it. Psalm chapter 2, I love it. Psalm chapter 2, it says, These people, these kings that come together to, to make war with me, you know what God is doing right now? He's laughing. He's laughing in, he in heaven, looking down at them going, ha, ha, ha. You just hold on a minute. And he looks over to squat one of these days and he'll go, and now. <laughs> that, that's, that's the way I have to look at it that simply. I know there's a little bit more spirituality to it, but that's just the way I have to look at it and that's the way I like to teach it. That's what it was going to happen. God is not the underdog here. No, God is <laughs> perfect. And, and uh, if y'all want to cut right now, we're going to go to a different one. I've got a whole little thing here that I want to do about sinners. Uh, you gonna say bye bye? Are you gonna keep going, Bill? You gonna say bye bye? Uh, you gonna say bye bye? You gonna keep going, Bill? You gonna say bye bye? You gonna too? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be maybe a thirty minute study. Hold on. Okay. Bye bye.
They give me time to fix my hair. <laughs> <laughs>